This Twin Peaks Investing Podcast is brought to you in association with SharePad from ShareScope, the UK's number one investment data and analysis software for private investors and traders. Visit sharescope.co.uk and discover the advantage. Hello and welcome to the Twin Peaks Investing Podcast. My name is Peter Higgins and you can find me at Conquest 3 and I'm here with my co-host Peter at Weirdy Dealer on Twitter. This is Twin Peaks Investing number 68 and we're once again recording this live on video. I um, want to thank all of you for um, putting up with our ugly mugs in the last <laughs> Uh, podcast which we put out live as a shock to see um, how it would go and we're we're absolutely beside ourselves really in the sense of you guys actually turned up in numbers in comparison to you know just a flat screen with a picture to actually look at us and what we were talking about and getting to know our little isms and schisms and we're sitting here going up from a couple of hundred um, listening to our podcast via YouTube we're on the cusp of hitting nearly 800 views. Doesn't sound a lot, but for two guys who are sitting in there, basically in their offices and front rooms, you know, in Windsor and Leicester, that's a lot, that's a lot for us. So thank you all for that have visited us on, on YouTube. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for your feedback. Pete? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Up, mate? Yeah, well... <laughs> People want to see your ugly mush, mate. I, mate, I, I, I mean, I'm really pleased with the, the response we had. And... I'm so pleased that I've actually moved my camera and 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 had a makeover and you know <laughs> gave, cut, combed me hair, mate. You know how it is, and uh, polished my glasses, so I'm I'm on top form. Put a tie? No, I haven't put a tie on. I didn't put a tie on. No, we don't do ties, um, mate. We don't do ties. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So no, I mean. You know, it's great that that people watched it, and it's it, well. What's really pleasing is that people are still listening. And, and hopefully we'll keep it so that even though we're going to use the video format going forward, it will still work as a podcast. We don't want to destroy it as an audio only thing, you know. Yeah, we won't change anything. It's just the beauty of the fact it's being recorded now. And that's that's it. We're just helping it go onto another platform. Um, and those those people that, you know, um, want to put it through their you know, smart TVs and watch it on big screen, they can do. Those that want to carry on listening to it whilst they're going for a walk and and also um, listening to it whilst they're traveling various different pl- locations, they can do that as well. It's just another little vehicle for us to, to yeah, see what happens with it. That's the thing, isn't it? It's like having the video, you get a little bit more emphasis and nuance. And, and I, I saw quite a few comments on that on Twitter where people say, you know, seeing you actually talking about it, I, we can see your enthusiasm and your, your your sort of excitement for it. And I think I think that extra nuance really helps, you know. Absolutely. I mean, the, the thing for me and the most important thing is that Pete and I will always just going to tell you tell it like it is. We're not going to change anything because there's a video now in front of us. We're just going to be the way that we are. I might have to shave now on a on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Um, and whilst I'm saying that, it is, it is recording this on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and do my hair as well. Um, so it's the it's it's the eighth of February. Lots of people had a vol 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 volatile January. It was vile. Um, opening on a lot of stocks that are, are beloved by lots and lots of people. It just did not turn out to be a good January for lots and lots of stocks. But we're back, we're past that now. We're sitting in in February. Market retain remains volatile. Tech stocks are still getting sold off. Um, it's going to be a very very interesting February going forward. The old adage of what happens in January gives you a lot of a lot of a bit of a view of what's going to happen with the stock market. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I never have been. Um, not just this year. So we'll see what happens. We're sitting, Pete, um, today with the um, with the FTSE. Having a little bit of a flat day, a bit of an indecision, really. Uh, we're still sitting near uh, 52-week highs, and the stock market FTSE 100 touched today at 7.631, a high of the day, a low of 7.548, the low of the day, and it closed at 7.567, just down six points. Um, FTSE All Share 
four, two, three, three, down just three points. Um, aim down three points again, 0.29% at 1,082. Uh, so, so yeah, so not not a bad day today, really. A lot of indecision. No one yeah. knows. It's just holding up as such um, the markets. No one really think, knows what's going to happen next. I think I think it's interesting that the FTSE 100 actually cracked that seven six seven thousand six hundred level, um, even though it fell back later. The fact that it's been able to push through is a bit of a sign that it can probably get back up there again, and I expect it to do that. Um, if you look on a short-term chart, probably the best is a three-month chart. Um, you can see it there on the screen, perhaps. Um, you should be able to see there's a definite triangle. Move my finger. There's a definite triangle there where it's squeezing from underneath and there's like a flat top and that basically squeezed, you know, wet, squeezed it until it popped out the top. Um, and that's what happened today. Now I saw this was looking like it could happen. And last night I added to that FTSE 100 index spread bet long, you know, trading system thing that we talked about on another podcast. People can look on my website. It's all about it. Um, I added to that, um, and I've taken it up from £3 a point to £5 a point. So I didn't add a lot because I don't want to take on loads of risk. To me, the system is still in its test. Um, but it's done well. You know, I've been running it seven or eight months, and it was up something like 28% when I added to it last night. So I've, I've zeroed it again. And I'm going to sort of measure it from the point where I've zeroed it now. The, the interesting thing about what's going on at the minute is that it's 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 it keeps hitting that sort of little resistance there, Pete. Right. So we've had the 52 week high of seven six one one. Yeah, that's our 52 week high. The resistance, as I said, we before, went over was that seven, today. Yeah, yeah. I'm just about to yeah. say that we went, went over that today, and we actually hit seven six three one. But what we need to get past is 7674, which takes us back to February of last year. Now, once we've cleared that and the markets relax about interest rates, inflation and price of oil, price of gas, price of gas electric, we could see the markets move higher. My concern remains the same, Pete. I'm cautious on the markets. I'm trimming various different stocks. Mm. I'm buying where I see a bit of value. I want to see the FTSE 250 Put, show a bit of strength because that's the engine really yeah and that will drag the FTSE 250 and the all share higher again beyond 7700 for the FTSE 100 and if we can see that happen 7700 I think the market will then consolidate for a little while the stocks that are sitting there unloved I think they will find it get another little lease of life and we could see the markets actually do well but there's a wall of noise and worry still oh you know, going on regarding, yeah, we, you know. We, we talked about it on podcast 67, but we were saying there are so many factors, you know, Ukraine, higher interest rates, political problems in the UK. I mean, you know, it, it's just countless high valuations, all, all these things. And all of that is so cloud in the picture. And like you, I'm cautious. I mean, I only added cautiously to that, FTSE 100 test system last night because it's been something I've been meaning to do for quite a while. I want to make the test more meaningful. And now with, you know, £37,000 long exposure, it's going to be a bit more meaningful and a li little bit more scary because it's real money. Um, but, you know, it, I'm still cautious and I'm, I'm not really doing much with my normal share portfolio. I'm 100% invested pretty much. Um, I added to... I bought more PHP, primary health properties, in my income portfolio last week. And, you know, I see that as a really boring, tedious income defensive stock. And, and by buying it last week, I was hopefully locking in a yield of 
sort of 4.5% going forward. <laughs> Typically, it dropped after I bought it, which was really annoying because I thought I'd waited long enough and I thought I'd caught the turn quite nicely, but the damn thing continued to drop. Um, so the yield on it now is probably up to like 4.8%, a little bit annoying, but that's life. Long term, going forward, I'm very happy sitting on primary health properties. I think that's going to be a, a lovely little income stock that's just going to sit there. I don't need to worry about it. There was talk today in Parliament about the health service and the things they're doing there, more money going in. They're going to need these health centres, you know, there's no doubt about it. They're going to need more of them. I can see PHP expanding in Ireland and more in the UK. So I think it looks looks a nice little stock to be holding. Well, the, th the thing with that particular stock, Pete, you won't have long to wait because it's saying here on the 16th of February, they're going to be coming out with their preliminary results. So if the, if the bottom's not in by the 16th it, and it comes out with good news, the bottom will definitely be in once those good that good news comes out on the 16th. So, you know, it bodes well. You've only got to wait until next um, next Friday, mate, and you'll be you'll know what's going on. Yeah, I'll probably get a profit good news. <laughs> Say again? My luck, we'll probably get a profit warning. Oh, hopefully yeah. not. Hopefully not. Hopefully uh, not. Talking I mean... of profit warning, talking of profit warnings, Pete, um, one stock today, which again has been disappointing. Um, I'll talk about the one that disappointed that I own um, um, next after this one. Ocado, oh, the yeah. online grocery and delivery business, um, slumped again today um, after announcement of its um, full year results that missed both earnings and revenue forecast. We were talking about the likes of all the online retailers and one those that, you know, were having a real, real good time during 2020 and 2021 regarding everyone shopping online. Um, so I can't get to the bottom, really, of why they're struggling to generate the revenue that they've always said they're going to rev generate. You know, and they're trying to claim that it's because they've invested so much money on their ongoing technology investment. Uh, revenues were up 7%, but it just seems to be that the, the cash burn is just keeps going and going and going and going. You know, so I'm not sure when they're going to get to the point where they hit targets, if that makes sense, and forecasts. Yeah, I mean, you can you can sort of understand the profit being hit if they've been investing more money, but there's no excuse for the revenue growth being pretty pedestrian is there especially when they signed up this big deal with marks and spencer and that seemed to be going so well so i'm sort of struggling to understand that yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult one it's really it really is because i okay. thought that the marks and spencer deal would actually add to their revenues and add to the deal making and had to other people thinking well it's good enough for mark for um for marks and spencers and it's good enough you know for others but it's, it's not it's not happening at all for them at the minute and then yeah. that goes on to my, sorry, go on. I'm just looking on SharePad. Oh, okay. there's no forecast showing. Um, I mean, it's got a 9.2 9 billion market cap today. Um, that's at yeah. 12 pounds 25. That is one heck of a meaty market cap for a company that's losing money. So, yeah. Well, holders have to decide Not what they want to do because it, just it looks really weak on the ship. I mean, it's in a downtrend channel. It looks weak, yeah. so I wouldn't be surprised if it goes lower. It's 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 possibly going lower. It's going to lose a lot of. I mean, each time you come out with a profit warning, you people lose faith in the actual stock, and that's no different to my stock, which got smashed today. Um, I've held it with a view that you know they've got a relationship with Amazon. They they're in the the big data cloud space. They're going to eventually, you know, do well. Eventually, they're going to get away from the Ulick Packard anchor that, where they made that massive oh, acquisition. It's never, ever gone, never gone right for them. So, Microfocus, um, which yeah. I hold, got smashed today by 10%, Pete. You know, no. uh, said its revenue had continued to decline despite narrowing losses. So, the problem they've got, really, is that if you're <laughs> still making losses, yeah, if your revenues are still declining, how do you get rid of it? Because they've got a mountain of debt as well. Um, so they got smashed again. You know, loss after after tax was substantially narrowed, um, half a million pound loss. So I'm like thinking, you know what? Is that 
are they going to get out of their own way regarding revenue, re revenue regeneration? Or is somebody else that's going to come and go, right, enough is enough. Let's put these guys out of the misery. You know? Um, <laughs> but they're, they're paying a, they've, got a debt, they've got a debt, Pete, and they're going to pay a dividend. I'm like, that doesn't make up for the shares dropping 10% today, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Looking, looking at SharePad, it's on a forecast PE of four, rising two years out to 4.5. That's obviously going the wrong way because the, the PE should be getting lower. Um, but the scary thing is the debt, as you say, it's, it's got a 1.367, so 1.367 billion market cap. But SharePad is showing the debt at over four billion. So yeah, it doesn't. Yep. It's not a pretty situation. Yeah, I didn't go through the results with a fine tooth comb. I'm not sure if the debt's come down a little bit since then. But, uh, but again, yeah, it's it's just it's just shocking, Pete. Looking at the chart, it's had the sort of big falls years ago, if you like. Um, let me just I'll just show it right. Yeah, so should be able to see it there where basically it had the it had the big falls um when was it sort of like 2019 sort of through 2021 since that the last year or so it's really been going sideways and you know it's in that sort of rehab phase really yeah no, i've just pulled it up again now net debt 4.195 as you yeah, say, you know, versus, versus versus market cap of 1.5 billion. If you can't generate the revenue, yeah, you can't get rid of the debt quick enough. You know, they should not even be paying me or any shareholder a dividend whilst they're, whilst they're, whilst they're saddled with 4.1 of whatever it is of, of debt. It's Definitely just, not. It's just crazy. Absolutely yeah. crazy. Well, well, we'll see. What's your thinking on it? Are you thinking you're going to stick with it or do you think you well, are? I, I, I my average price is, is sub three quid. Um, my hope, obviously, when I do these sort of some of the parts sort of um, purchases for recovery is that the company recovers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then yeah. you start generating greater and greater revenue. And then other people think, oh, crikey, these guys have, have turned, in, turned in the big tanker around. And the debt reduces. Other people see them as attractive and maybe they get bought out or they actually get to the point where they're worth five quid, they're worth seven quid. You know, that's my hope. Um, they're selling off the key parts they don't want, the non-core parts of the business. Um, but it's not enough to get rid of four point, whatever it is, one, 4.195 of, of debt, billions of debt. So my, 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 thing, my thinking at the moment is I'm going to hold on. I'm going to see what they do for the next update. I'm going to wait and see whether the share price goes. I'm still in profit on the stock. But one of the things I'm conscious about and the mistakes I keep making is putting too much faith in management that keep disappointing. So I'll probably try and put in a stop loss, which I don't often use uh, stop losses. I tend to put manual ones in my head and write down on paper. And when it comes to that price, yeah. I then consider what's going on and why it's got there. But I might actually put a stop in so that manually and mechanically it's taken out of my control so if it hits this particular price it takes me out rather than me going as to finding reasons why i should stay on board so i might i might do yeah. that so i, I come out with some have profit you, if it if it goes back too low towards um three quid have you got any stocks that you that you wouldn't mind buying new stocks well we're going to talk about that a bit later on regarding yeah, what somebody yeah, posed but, that question i've, I've been buying been? some stocks right? i've been buying some stocks yeah so, um, and I've I mean, got my eye on my watch list. To me, if it was me, if I was in profit 30 odd percent, which is what you are, because you, you know, it's four quid today, you've paid three quid. To me, it'd be a no brainer. I would literally move on, sell and move on. That's what I'd do. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, a that's a fair point. I mean, the thing, the thing is, Pete, I, I often, I've done my research on, on stocks like this. And if somebody was, and I'm looking at who and what could, who could buy this? Yeah. What would the acquire pay for this? And it's not four quid. They're not going to let this company go for four quid. Um, could it, go, could it stay lower than four quid over the next 12 months? Absolutely. Categorically. Yes. You know, I've, I've already had a couple a, a dividend from it. I'm going to get another one. So that takes my price nearer to four pounds 50 already for the shares. Yeah. So that puts me up 
almost 50% um, already. Um, I'd be happy to sell them to somebody for eight quid if anybody wants to take them. Happy, happy as days. You know I mean? yeah. But it may not happen this year. Um, they, need to, they need to get out of their own way and generate revenue. I, I wrongly thought that with the Amazon results that came out last week, they were, and their main growth was the AWS side of their business, right? Yeah. Obviously, um, MicroFocus micro has got a link to Amazon with this blah, 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 blah. And I thought, ooh, 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 what if? What if a little bit of that's rubbed off on, on microfocus? Today told me that the answer is categorically no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, and the yeah. share price has been absolutely smashed. So I have to wait a bit longer now to see what happens um, with the guys today. I suppose, I suppose the, way, way. The, the way to be valuing this is to think, instead of thinking price to earnings and stuff, which is effectively the same as... When you do price to earnings, it's like the share price divided by the earnings per share. That's the same as the market cap divided by the total earnings in, in millions of pounds. So what you can do is use enterprise value divided by the earnings. So in that case, you'd be adding 4.2, 4.1 billion of borrowing so the 1.3 billion of debt, getting an enterprise value, dividing that by the earnings, which would probably bang the PE up to more like 20 or something. So, so it wouldn't look as cheap then, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, someone's going to, if somebody wants to buy it, they're going to have to take the debt, obviously. That that's, goes without saying. But I, I tend to do my, my calculations on, on the sum of the parts, Pete. I do I look yeah, at the yeah. what is the intrinsic yeah. value yeah. Of, the, of the business, and it's beyond $6, six billion. Um, so that's why I, I bought it. They're paying me a dividend now, which I don't want. Um, I want them to get rid of the debt, but I'll I'll take it whilst I'm waiting, mate, and see what happens. I'll give them another three to six months, maybe a year, see what happens and see what develops. And hopefully they'll get out their own way and generate some revenue. Yeah, sound, makes sense. Mate, we were talking about the indexes. What we didn't mm -hmm. mention was the US ones. And Go on. look at, looking at those... I mean, today, when we're speaking, so this is about um, half past six on Tuesday, the 8th of February. Um, the NASDAQ is currently up. It's been very sort of sideways and not doing much um, for the last few days, really. Um, but it's interesting that it is forming a bit of a triangle again over the last sort of like two weeks. And obviously, we need it to break to the upside. And if it can do that, which on the NASDAQ comp means getting closing over 14,500. If it can close over 14,500, that would be quite a positive development. Um, and hopefully, you know, if we could see that in the next few days, that would really change the tenor of the markets. Because at the moment, the narrative is that NASDAQ's massively overvalued. To be honest, I think that it's, it's a narrative I buy into. Um, the narrative is that the Nasdaq's massively overvalued, but maybe it's still going to defy us all and manage to, to rise up. So, I mean, the real, the real crunch is whether it can break up above that level or, worst case, it goes below the low of that nasty Monday, which looks to me around about 13,000 or something. If it goes below thirteen thousand, we're in real trouble. Yeah, it's it's it, obviously we go back a little ways now, Pete. And um, the fifty-two week high, sixteen thousand two hundred two. Fifty-two week low, twelve thousand three hundred ninety-seven. Open today at thirteen nine eight four, and it's sitting at fourteen one five five at the minute. And if you go, if you look onto a three month chart, Pete. Yeah. You're looking at the next sort of resistance, as you say, sitting. Um, at 14,417, and then yeah. after that, the next resistance really is 14,900. So, you know, 15, call it 15, you want 14,900, yeah. and you, you're, back, you're back where everyone's living up on the tech stocks again. Um, I think there's a lot of headwinds out there, Pete. Oh. You know, a couple of them are getting smashed, um, tech wise. You know, we in betwixt the last podcast and this podcast. Um, PayPal got absolutely smashed. Yeah, I hold um, it. Facebook. I hold it, so it killed Facebook. me. Yeah, Facebook got absolutely smashed. Um, 
Amazon, there or thereabouts. Microsoft, again, did okay. There's more coming down the pipe tech-wise um, as to who's going to be okay. And that's going to power the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ gets, out of its, gets in a situation where there's quite a few of their larger stocks do well. And again, everyone falls in love with it, with it again. You know, we talked about all these different entities, um, UK-wise, that are exposed to some of these, you know, funds and also um, other entities exposed to some of these US behemoths. And if they if they sneeze, Pete, we get the cough, as, as, you, as you said. It's just, it's just oh, yeah. one of them things. Right now, today, it's up 1%. But by the time we finish this podcast, that 1% could evaporate in a heartbeat because someone said something. You know, we were no, taking no. the mickey out of um, Peloton only a couple of weeks ago. Now there's talk that X, Y, and Z is pot potentially considering buying Peloton. <laughs> you know what I mean? So It's, it's really interesting it's how, and we, we touched on it with Ocado, how yeah. a lot of the things that happen during lockdown, so the sort of habits, if you like, that individuals got into during lockdown they haven't endured i mean you know peloton's the probably one of the best examples uh, well there's peloton there's netflix there's Ocado, as we said there's boohoo there's you know so many stocks that were the darlings during lockdown now they're just all coming out with warnings and having a terrible time so it's it's remarkable how things switch i i don't or don't often do this, but I must say I've done it a little bit more recently. I've got in the habit of watching a little bit of CNBC for only like half an hour. I'm having my lunch or something around sort of like, say, half past 12 or one o'clock, whatever it is. Catching Jim Cramer and all that sort of stuff, you know, which is great, great entertainment, you know. But the um, thing that really hit me yesterday, they were talking about how much the Russell 2000 which is the U.S. small cap index, if you like, how much that was down this year. And it was something bonkers, like 25% down this year since January the 1st. That's staggering, isn't it? Wow. It, I was like, is. whoa. I mean, and, and, and like you say, this is the problem with, with small caps. When they're doing well, um, they're, they're absolutely fine. But if, if they have a problem or if the market fo you know, falls out of love with them, boy, oh, boy. You know what I mean? Interesting. You really, you, you really are getting smashed. With, with the UK small caps, which is really the sort of area that I tend to be most interested in these days, I'm actually starting to see quite a bit of value. You know, when I'm looking through the earnings reports and looking at the valuations in the morning, which I tweet out and stuff, I'm seeing quite a few things now where I'm saying this looks cheap or this looks good value or, yeah, this could be interesting. You know, more than I was certainly a few months ago when there was nothing worth buying. The, the, opp the opportunities are there, Pete. Um, we just need to do a bit of digging. And it's best to do the digging before someone else comes in and tells you it's a good idea, um, as I always say. I just want to go back just a little bit, Pete. And this, is, this will fall into your, your wheelhouse here, your flavours that you like. Yeah. And if you recognise the ticker symbol, the ticker symbol is H-O-G in the US. Do you know what that is, Pete? Harley's rum rum. Harley Davidson. Oh, Harley yeah. Davidson. Yeah. Harley Davidson today, Pete. Oh, Nick, Nick is going to love this. 15%, right? Yeah. Harley Davidson stock is gaining 15% today after the company reported a profit of 15 cents per share, beating estimates. You see, beating estimates. Some companies can actually beat estimates uh, versus the loss of 34 cents a share. Yeah. On wow. sales of 816 million, above expectations of 699 million dollars, absolutely smashed it out of the park, mate. So there you go. So we're talking about the last podcast. You know, they're buying yachts. People are painting yachts now. They're buying Harley Davidsons, mate, and they've also got an electric one, electric Harley, which my mate has got. Um, yeah, my mate Nick's got an electric Harley, mate. So if you ever want to check, have a little ride on one of them, mate. Even the Pillion, you can get on one of them. Strap me on. A strap me on <laughs> pipe. <laughs> really? Yeah so, the, yeah, so that's what's going on there, mate. So, yeah, wow. just it just surprised me because I'm thinking, Harley Davidson, up that what's happening there? Someone taking it over because it's, it's a sort of company where the, 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 the US government will go, no, no one's buying that unless they, they're American sort of thing, you know? 
But yeah, oh, up 15% today, mate. Absolutely smashed it. Amazing, amazing. This is a quick hello to you, our valued Twin Peaks Investing Podcast listener. Whatever channel you're listening to, please make sure to subscribe and you'll always be the first to get the new episodes. Thank you for your continued support. Mate, um, should right, I talk Go on. Oh, oh, yes, go for it. I want you, want you to tell everybody about the charity. Tell them about the page it's on and let's get them flying in and making donations to your wonderful charity, mate. Go for it. Fantastic. So um, last year, obviously, we we helped the uh, Memphis charity, which is one near, near Peter. This year, we're helping the Backup Trust, which is a charity that sort of does help spinally injured people. I'm spinally injured myself because I'm paraplegic, paralyzed from the chest down, obviously a wheelchair user, which is why I would need a lot of strapping on to get me on a Harley, I'll tell you. But um, yeah, so they do a lot of great work, particularly with kids where they they um, run things like skiing courses where, where paraplegics and tetraplegics, the pe- people who haven't got used to their arms and their hands, uh, other hands they could often have a bit of mobility in their arms um can can you know go skiing and stuff and they do outward bound courses and they do things like wheelchair skills courses which are incredibly uh useful things to do um and and a lot of it is about the sort of psychological adjustment of having such a life-changing thing from from being someone who can walk about and do all that kind of stuff to suddenly being stuck in a wheelchair or whatever so you know, it's a great charity, well worth supporting. Um, I've been on, on one of their skiing things years ago, and it's, it's, it's all good stuff. Anyway, um, we've set them up. Uh, well, they did the work, not me. Um, a Just Giving page, which is www.justgiving.com slash fundraising slash Twin Peets. That's it, actually. It's that simple. And if you go to that, it should come up with the uh, screen and stuff. I'm sure Pete will put it on the link and that when he's setting up the, the thing, and it will probably be down. It'll probably be down here below the screen, I'm sure. Um, and, yeah, you know, give all your money away. I'm sure they'll love it, you know. They won't, they won't moan with that. <laughs> no, that's brilliant, Pete. I, I'm, I'm really pleased because they, they, they have um... – They've fo- they've followed um, both of our accounts. They're going to see what we're we're up to. Um, so if anybody can su- support uh, Pete, we're going to be having that backup charity as our Twin Peaks charity of the year. So we're going to be promoting that throughout the year. So if you want to just go onto that page, having listened to this, brilliant, and make a big donation, absolutely fantastic. Um, we've did we did really well with the Twin Peaks challenge last year. We'd love to do the same. For the backup charity to do some fantastic work pete's told me all about it so let's just do what we can this as you all know is a free to air sort of podcast this is just you guys ladies and gents saying thank you to to pete and i by supporting a charity that pete supports and as and has received pete's re- received support from them as well so it's it's brilliant to be able to it's just our way of giving back you know this is what yeah, it's all about totally i mean and don't you know don't don't I mean, if you can only give us a fiver, give a fiver. I mean, it, don't, it doesn't matter, you know. Just anything you can you can contribute would be would be would be great, you know. Anyway, right, Pete, you had something that come up on Twitter today, I believe. Yes, yes, you've just prompted me. I was going to go somewhere else, but I'll go to that. Okay. Um, that's, that's probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, absolutely thrown. See. No, we, we we have a mutual friend on Twitter. Um, just the one. Um, and his name or his Twitter handle is Bounce Trade at Bounce Trade, Pete. And actually, his tweet was from yesterday. And I find this is quite an intriguing um, tweet. So that's why I just thought it'd be good for us to just chew it over and also talk about some of the replies that Bounce got. So yeah. his, his account is called Bounce Capital, and it's at Bounce Trade. So hello there, Bounce Trade. Hopefully, you're listening to us, and hopefully, this helps with your. Um, thoughts and processes. So the question was, I have spotted a very good company I want to buy, full stop. Problem is what to sell. Serious question, full stop. How do you guys fund new position if must raise cash, question mark? Do you sell winners or losers? 
exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Right, some of the replies here um, from our good friend at Treasy T. Tally at Treasy T. Hi, Treasy. Uh, replies, revisit losers, look at percentage down and ask yourself, if anything has changed, is it realistic that company will recover or are you still holding on a wing and a prayer? Question mark. Another reply from at whole wit. You need to define winners and losers. In my opinion, it's not about what you've made or lost the most money in. Good shares trend up along with increasingly good fundamentals. Bad shares are opposite. Sells, sell the ones going down, wink, buy when the market thinks the same as you thought about the company. Then we've got the secret accountant. Personally, I rarely sell, but I'd sell a winner. Rightly or wrongly, I struggle to sell losers if nothing has fundamentally changed with the loser from when I bought it. Okay, and, it, and Bounce actually replied, I typically do the same, mate. I sell the winners. One strategy I use is to sell trusts when a big discount closes and I have made outsized gains. I do have a problem. I do problem, probably leave a little bit on the table. You know, so there's lots of different discussions there. Um, let me find another one here. Um, the quality small cap investor at growth dash invest one. Give yourself a clean slate and run through your portfolio saying, if I was building a portfolio today, would, would I buy this company? If your answer, if, if you answer no, to any of your holdings, then that is a good indication. I think that's a really, really good reply there. There's lots more, but I just wondered what your thoughts were on that one, Pete, and what is it that you do? Yeah, I mean, I I bashed out a tweet this morning um, in reply to that, and my sense of it, I think it was whole wit in the list you read out who sort of hit my thinking on it in terms of um, – it's not really whether they're a winner or a loser it's sort of for you. It's like your entry price hasn't really got anything. To, you know, your entry price and whether you're in a profit or whether you're in a loss from that, the relative move in the prices has got nothing to do with whether it's a great company or not or whatever. So for me, it comes back to what the last guy, last person said, which was, um, you know, it's, it's about looking at each stock on its own individual merits and thinking to yourself, well, has that one, you know, had a good run? It's a great winner for me. I've let it run. It's got momentum. There's lots of good stuff. But my goodness, it's getting overvalued now. And I'm getting a little bit worried about X, Y, Z or whatever. And, and just think, OK, that's the one that's going to go. Or, of course, an alternative is you might actually find that you could top slice one or two of your winners, which would free up cash, which would enable you to buy the new share. Of course, the risk with that is it then gives you an extra holding. So you, you may have problems with portfolio limits because I've introduced a thing where I've got a maximum of 40 stocks in my sort of normal, what I call my normal portfolio, the WD40. Um, and I've got a maximum of 15 in my income portfolio. And I'm very strict now about those slots. I won't go over the number. So, so you know, so you need to, if, if you've got a kind of limit, which I think is a good thing to have, because it, it stops you getting in that problem where you just end up with loads and loads and loads of stocks, which is so easy to do. It's so easy to become a collector. Um, so, yeah, so I would assess each on its merits. And, and, and as Treasy said, um, you know, if you've got a stock that's a loser, you've got to dispassionately really, really analyze it and think, well, is this really likely to recover? Or is it one where I'm just going to end up, it's going to go to zero, I'm going to lose my shirt on it, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's a case of looking at each individual stock on its merits, I think. Fair, fair well, I think, I, 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 can I add, I think selling a winner is a very dangerous thing to do. If it's as black and white as sell a winner or sell a loser, I would say sell your losers. 
because the thing is winners have momentum if they are you know how does it i try to think how it would look for people watching is it like that or is it like yeah like that so it's like if it's trending up <laughs> see now we got cameras we, we've got a whole new world of audio visual experience so if it's trended up which might be that way or it might be that way if it's trending up you know let it run because it's got momentum and it's only once it gets ridiculously high and the valuation gets really stupid and you start feeling really you know scared with it that, that it's time to get rid of it certainly top slicing makes sense i for some time now i've not had a problem with having cash in the portfolio however when i when i'm looking to buy something new as i have been doing year to day i've been looking at the stocks which have fallen either out of love with or simply haven't delivered i very rarely will opt i don't think i've ever opted to sell a winning stock you know um in order to buy something new i top sliced um angle recently which is was up significantly for me uh, because I wanted to buy something new. I didn't want to add new, um, new, new money to the market. That's why I did it on that occasion. But like yourself, I'm looking on the occasions that has happened in the past, and I'll probably do it again. If I don't want to add enough new money to the market, I will look at the stocks that I'm like, really? Again? You know, what's going on with this? It's not happened. No, the market's doing well, reasonably okay. This stock still hasn't done okay. What is wrong with this? stock why is it walking treacle um and that will be the one i get I'll, that's the one i would look to get rid of i wouldn't look at the one that's done really well for me and go ordinarily well that's done well i'll take i'll grab that profit there whilst another stock is going like that it will be the one that's on the on the base that's gone nowhere hopefully it's not minus but if it is minus i'll be like let me see if that stock there has done better but what you've got should, what the other thing to think about is this you have a portfolio of stocks, whether that be five, whether that be 25 or 40, as in your case, Pete. Does that new stock you're looking at, is it better than those five or those 40 that you've got already? That's the most important thing. If it's really that much better than all of the other components of your portfolio, then it means that X amount of stocks in your portfolio aren't as good as the one that you're looking at. So it's an easy choice. So choose from the ones that aren't as good as the one you're buying. And irrespective of whether they're losing in the middle or high, get rid of that one then. It makes it easy because you should be looking at that new stock if your portfolio is OK and all the stocks in your portfolio are actually you've got conviction on. You know, because the easiest sign of conviction in a stock is when it gets hit by 5, 10 or 15 percent, you will get rid of it in a heartbeat. <laughs> there won't be any like, oh, I'm not even thinking about it. Like, bang, you've sold yeah. it. Yeah. But if it's sitting there flatlining, just ebbing and flowing and blah, 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 blah. You're sitting quite dandy watching the market and thinking, OK, I'll keep that. I'll keep that. I'll keep that. The minute it drops five and 10, 15 percent later, you've sold it. I've seen it so many times as people talking about I'm 50 percent, 60 percent, 8 percent cash. Why? Because they're concerned about the market. What triggered them? Volatility. Yeah. The markets have been going up and we're nearer to 50, 52 week highs right now. Is it the time to buy a brand new idea? I don't know. I've done it. Is it the right thing to do? I don't know. Right. The interesting thing about selling is that it's far more difficult and it always has been. It always will be than it is to buy a stock. You can find all the reasons to buy a new stock. The difficult one, the psychology one is how and when to sell. We all struggle with it. I struggle with it. Oh, yeah. We all struggle with it. No doubt. And that's the bit we've got. To, we've got to educate ourselves I... and read more on and find the reasons. You know, someone could do something. You know what? I use simple strategy. It's gone below the 200 day moving average. I'm selling it. What? <laughs> that works for some people. Yeah. yeah. You know, they don't look at any fundamentals. They look at the chart. The chart tells them everything. In, out, in, out, gone. Everyone's different. The only answer I can give to Bounce that he should do is go with his gut. Go with what he wants to do. It's his money. Yeah, I think it's some, it's some, you, you've made me think of some really, really sort of angles on that. That from the last one, you said, go, we go. I think there's a lot to be said for that. I think, I think one of the things I would add is don't rush the decision. Don't, don't literally think, oh, I really like this new stock. I spent ages looking at that. I'm now going to whiz through my portfolio. Oh, I don't like that when it's gone. You know, don't do that. 
look through, take your time, consider them. The share, the share you want to buy will still be there tomorrow. If it's that great, if it jumps 10%, it don't matter. Because if it's that great, it's going to do 200%. The fact you missed the first 10 is irrelevant, right? So, um, yeah, um, there was something else I wanted to add that was that was um, building on what you said. Um, ah, yeah, right. It's a thing I have a real issue with, right? Um, quite often, we look at a new stock and we fall in love with a new stock and we're convinced a new stock's the best thing on earth. But the simple reality is however much research we do on that stock, we do not know it as well as we know stocks in our portfolio that we've held for one, two, three, four, five years, where we've had loads of results, loads of history. We've known the personalities come and go in the, in the management teams. We know how the share price tends to move, its volatility and whatever. And it's like, all of a sudden, we're going to ditch something we understand and know really well. Um, be, be, yeah, we want to get a divorce because we've seen this bird down a local pub. You know what I mean? And that's 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 really what it is, you know. And and I just think, you know, we need don't to say the B word, mate. Right? Come on, stop. What? You've seen a nice lady. Don't use the B word. Come on. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Don't well, get yourself in trouble again, mate. Peter. What are Don't you doing? Yourself into, you're not doing the pub. Mate, I'm talking about a green parrot. You saw a green parrot. You don't get don't get rid of your budgery car because you saw a green parrot. Simple as that. Nice oh, green God. parrot down the pub. Every pub's got a green oh. parrot. Everyone knows that. Oh my gosh. No, it's a it's a it's a good point. And sometimes the best. I think we lost the point in all the in all the. No, no, don't no. reiterate your point and do it and do it sensibly and cleanly. <laughs> what he is saying to reiterate his point is the fact sometimes the best stocks that you the best stock isn't the new stock; it's already in your portfolio. That's what Pete's trying to say, in a very long-winded way. Yeah, which is why party. these podcasts, which is why these podcasts last for ninety minutes rather than one hour which we're always yeah. trying to do because it goes right round the blank houses, okay? It goes right round oh, the pub. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, Pete, oh. I'm going to share a stock of mine, um, which I got a nudge from. Oh, cool. Um, la yeah, last year, Pete. Um, there's a chap on Twitter, and his name is Deer Deerj Doom. Yeah. Have you heard, have you heard of that yeah, yeah. chat? Yeah. 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 And we were converting Hello, last year. Uh, his Twitter handle is at my dear G Doom. Yeah. Um, and as far and we and he came to our very, very first um Twin Peaks investing live, Pete, uh, back in 2018, 19. He's a good guy. Yeah, came up from Ireland for the for the full on mellow and came to our weird little thing at the end of the day and uh, was giving us some questions. So I've, I've really got a lot of time for, for him. Um, and we we're having a conversation last year, and I think I was talking uh, about um, BT and telecoms, and I was getting into that space and had already bought BT and all the rest of it. So we're having a conversation about um, telecoms and 5g and all the rest of it and he said you might want to have a look at nokia right everyone knows nokia the old brick phones and all the rest of it was the numero uno the apple of their day and then became the betamax of their day the interesting thing about it when i went away digging and i did a lot of digging on nokia i was like why would anyone want to buy nokia the interesting thing about nokia is that they were the numero uno in the telecom space mobile 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 space mobile telephone space and they have got a staggering array of ip and patents and every now and then this company comes out and says and does something and they go ah, ah, can't do that that ip that patent belongs to us and they've beaten x y and z litigation wise and blah 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 however i've not bought it for the litigation wins it's not a litigation uh, um buy for me it's a recovery place so i bought it last year sub um for for um euros and uh, near to three and a half and it's slowly but surely ebbed up and ebbed up and ebbed up 
And obviously we moved on to 5G. We're moving at some point in the next year and a half, two years to 6G. But interestingly enough, what's caught my eye recently, the results came out and the results are really, really good. And um, they've come out and they're now developing and have developed Nokia tablets, Pete. Yeah. Okay. Not phones, tablets. Yeah. Little tablets, yeah. mate. So I'm looking at the fact that that could, cre could create more revenue uh, for them going forward. So that's why I'm, I'm mentioning that to, to people today, because I, I suspect going forward, there's more, more to it down the pipe for this company. It's recovered already. I'm, I'm up um, quite well on, on the shares, but it's very, very interesting what's going on regarding their development and what they're going in. And obviously they're, they're, they're following a lot of other companies uh, regarding the tech and what's available for mobile data and all the rest of it. Um, so that, could they recover more? Is it is it denominated in dollars or in euros or what? Because it's, it's both. It, on you share both, they, oh, OK. Is it is it listed? Get it, in both. get it in euros. I've got it. I've got it in euros. You can get it in euros, and you can buy it in dollars, depending on which exchange you're going to use and purchase it on. They came. Right. They came out and said they're going to because they're doing. They've sorted. They've sorted their lives out. Basically, it's been a long, long, difficult journey for them. You know, they've watched. They've watched their cake being eaten by Apple essentially over the last fifteen years, um, and now they're setting themselves out properly. They're getting things sorted out. The predicting revenue is going to be up um, at 22 billion. It's like, really? Does Nokia still generate revenue? Yes, they're still milking it regarding revenue. Um, and they're talking about doing a, I think it's a 600 million euro share buyback scheme, Pete. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that could help. Yeah, it's a lot of money to, to, to you know, get rid of shares for. Um, well, so it's still recovering. It's still restructuring. Um, and I bought it last year. Um, nearer to three and a half euros each. Um, it's at, last week it was nearer to to six, um, to, nearer to five and a half ish. Uh, it's a recovery play for me. It's one of them keep on the locker and see what happens. It's an interesting another telecom stock. So that goes in with my my BT um, play as well. well. I'm looking on Sharepad and it, uh, five six nine point five cents. Guessing that's euros. I think it must be. Um, it's showing on on Sharepad as has been on a forecast PE of thirteen point two, fall into twelve two years out. I mean, those are attractive PEs to me. You know, that's that's that is that is virgin on the cheap. You know, but it, for the quality yeah, of something like Nokia, I think that's that's good. And you're getting a forecast yield of one point nine percent, rising to two point six percent. Looking at this. They're saying market cap of 24. Well, I'm not sure what's going on here. Sharepad's normally really good on the currencies. And it says yeah, here the, 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 market, pounds, yeah, the market cap is 34 billion euros at the minute. Right. Well, it could be right then. So Sharepad is saying 24 billion pounds. You're saying they're doing share yeah. buybacks of 600 million odd. Was that dollars or euros or whatever? Euros. Euros are still a substantial amount. And it says the borrowing is so 24, 24 billion market cap, but the borrowing is only 1 billion. That's actually very low borrowing for a company yep. of that size with those kind of revenues, with that kind of free cash flow. I think, I think that's a really good looking stock. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unloved, Pete. It's still unloved. It's not. No one talks about Nokia. In fact, it might as well be classed as you know. Back in the day, when we used to mock the Skoda car. They 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 peaked back in. Yo, I got a feeling. 99, 2000, Pete, and they've been oh, unloved yeah. ever since. Um, I got they, a feeling. They consistently right. cannot compete against Apple, and Apple are the are the the go to company. So they're just trying to just get back to a point of respect i think respectability yeah i so say i got a feeling my mate jordan in maidenhead owns these i'm pretty sure he does looking at the chart it's sort of got itself into a bit of a sideways range over about six months or something and uh if it can break above it it looks like about 650 that must that must be euros if it can get above 650 euros then that would that would be a very bullish sign. So hmm. yeah, I like that. Mate, let me, let me just, fundamentals great. Let me just throw this at you, Pete. 
right the the share price low right going going back over the past 20 years right 22 years june the 29th 2012 1 euro 98 wow yeah the high 53 euros 67 april the 28th 2000 that's how far they've come down we're both, were both dates the 28th of april was that coincidence no, they weren't both 28th of April, unless, unless I'm getting my bearings wrong. Right. June the 29th, 2012, and April okay. 28th, 2000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 5G, AI, big data, and also a little semi-play on, on the infrastructure of the metaverse and the fact people need big data of 5G and 6G to actually interact with the Oculus and all the rest of it via their mobiles if they're going to do that, you know? Um, I think and also... I, I used to work in the telecom sector, so I've got a bit of a feel for it. And the interesting thing with um, Nokia is that, you know, it's Finnish and whatever, but it's one of Finland's great companies. It gets a lot of, I'm, I'm not saying state support, but let's just say the Finnish government is pretty favorable to Nokia. And I, think you yeah. know, that's going to help them, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. That's interesting. Yeah. Mate, um, I've got a stock here. I think it was your stock, mate. Yeah, I think, mate, I think it's one we've discussed before. It's one I hold, mm -hmm. but it had okay. blinking good results the other day and totally caught everybody out. And that is good old IGG, IG Index, yeah, the spread betting company. Um, it okay. came out, I mean, the, the story with IGG. For me, it's really an income stock. You know, you get a flipping good dividend. I'll check the numbers in a minute. Um, you get a nice dividend. But when you look over time, it's history over like 15 years. It's just steadily risen. So you're getting steady, nice capital gains, as well as a pretty juicy dividend, which tends to rise. Um, what happened with IG was... They bought a company called Tasty Trade, which is like an options broker or something in America. And at the time of the buy, all of the analysts and all of the experts said, oh, no, terrible buy. They were overpaid. It's absolute rubbish. And the shares got absolutely caned down like 12 percent or something on the day. It was it was pretty nasty. But those latest results show that the tasty trade acquisition is actually looking pretty good. And maybe June Felix, or I think that's her name, the CEO, maybe she does know what's going on. And it, it gives them a good step into the American market where they've never been in before. Um, and, you know, I just think IG is a canny operator. It's the, you know, they invented spread betting. We've, we've definitely had that discussion on this podcast before. Because I'm sure I've mentioned them a while Absolutely. back. And um, I just think it's a great company. I'll, to give you them numbers that I was saying about, so looking on SharePad, on my little tablet, seven-inch tablet, I, that, that's, that's filling in while I'm waiting for it to load. Right. So going on the thing, IgG, punch it in, do the what's it, press the button. Right. Forward. Blimey. I mean... Forecast PE, 9.5. Two-year forecast PE, 9.2. This is at £7.74. Um, forecast dividend, 5.7%. Uh, I mean, 5.7%, that is a lot. Uh, Two-year forecast dividend, 6.5. So, you know, it, it's, yeah, it, it just stacks up. I mean, obviously, the fly in the ointment, is if we get big rises in interest rates, then a stock I mentioned earlier, PHP, primary health properties, that one's going to find life hard if, if interest rates go up loads because obviously discount, you know. Well, it'd be more attractive, you know, you'll just put the money in the bank account rather than buying an income stock. But the, the great thing with PHP and with IGG is that they've got good histories of growth and, the outlook for them, the chances are they can still keep growing. 
And so I think, yeah, they're not they're not exciting. They're not they're not your aim tiddler that's going to jump fifty percent tomorrow. But as a tuck it away, leave it, take your hands off it, stop playing with it. Right? It's never a good idea to play with it. You all know that. And well, um, Pete, you know, well, yeah, everyone knows yeah. that. Everyone knows that, mate. I'm just 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 say I'm saying it how it is, which is what we always do. And um, yeah, you just leave it alone and and just let it do its thing, and and it will keep delivering a nice steady dividend, I expect, and you'll do all right on it. That's my thinking. Whether you are an experienced or new investor, you know how valuable it is to conduct portfolio enhancing analysis and to have easy access to data that will give you the edge. As a Twin Peaks investing podcast listener, you can access an exceptional offer via SharePad from ShareScope, the UK's number one investment data and analysis software for private investors and traders. This special Twin Peaks offer is available to new subscribers only, and you can subscribe using the promo code TWINPEATS. The incredible and exclusive offer means that monthly subscribers will get their second month free and annual subscribers will get their 13th month free. Sign up and subscribe to SharePad today using the Twin Peets promo code and you can save up to £69. Visit sharescope.co.uk forward slash sharepad for further details and subscribe to the investing and trading analysis and data you need. I want I want to share a bit of, a bit of news here which really made me cheer um, yesterday and today. Um, I, I'm, I'm big on the best people and the best person getting the job. And unfortunately, in the city and, and you know, in and around where we are and jobs and employment, um, sometimes the best people don't get the jobs. And I'm not, no, this is not going down a political route. <laughs> Although some people might be thinking he's going to say the, the B word in a minute. I'm not going to say the B word. Um, I'm talking about, um, female CEOs, Pete. And yesterday, your share, if you're still holding it, oh. uh, Pets at Home and announced that Lisa yeah. McGowan was going to become their new group chief executive officer, their new CEO from the 1st of June 2022. Yeah, this year. It's got a great, comes from great pedigree. And it's brilliant that she's able to join the leadership team and add greater diversity to the board. And then following that today, um, the first female CEO of a house builder, Taylor Wimpy, yeah. Pete, yeah. Yeah, yeah. announced um, that Jenny Daly was going to be appointed their CEO coming on after the close of the AGM on the 26th of April. And again, more diversity. But that's the first woman allowed, you know, chosen, whichever word you want to use, and to be in charge of a house builder. So I'm absolutely thrilled uh, that those two individuals have been given the, the recognition that they rightfully deserve to lead those two companies and, and power to the elbow. And I want to I see more and more um, females leading companies because I, I'm of a view, A, I've always said this, and I keep saying this on this podcast, female investors are the better and the best investors oh, yeah. long term. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And the female leaders out there are absolutely shaking it up regarding some of the stocks. And the, the CEO of Aviva has gone in and just shaken things up. And now suddenly that, that stock is flavor flav. You know, they're getting up, sorting things wow. out, paying dividends, you know, redistributing. And the share prices hasn't been higher for a number of years. So it can be done. It should be done. And if the right person's in the right job doing the right things, it shouldn't matter what gender they are. But, you know, why not? You know, I'm trying to speak to some fund managers for the other podcast that I do, um, which is called the Investing Matters podcast. And you should be able to find that on Twitter and on Spotify. And a lot of those, um, a lot of the investment industry is, is I would say it's probably 89 percent males, the fund managers. And, and these female leaders of, of various different entities are finding it difficult to actually get people to give them the money to manage and actually do well and the, the vast majority of the female fund managers outperform their male peers but people would rather give the money to the male peers to underperform it's just madness 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Crazy. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens with that, mate. But I'm just wanting to share that news. I think it's well, absolutely brilliant. It's funny because I I tend to I've never empirically studied it or analysed it or whatever. But I just get the sense that when a company is run by a female CEO, things tend to go better. And I'm very happy to hear that a female is going to be running pets at home. What I was a little bit disappointed by was that there was no mention as to whether she owns a hamster or a, or a goldfish <laughs> or anything. But I think we'll just have to take it as red. Well, well, I'm not sure if it was a prop. Uh, you know, you know, these people yeah. like to use props every now and then, politicians. But when she was, uh, when the, the lady at Pets at Home obviously was taking a picture of her in the, ah. in the Times, I think was it the Times, the Times yesterday, um, there was a picture of her with a, a, a looked like a, a, a black Labrador, if that's if this ah. sort of thing. Um, with a, with a, she was with a black dog. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see that, what, what happens with that. That's great because I was absolutely gutted when I read her read read the update that she was joining and she was saying with you know I'm I'm really pleased to be joining a great company like Pets at Home da da da. I was hoping she'd say I've got a black Labrador, but that didn't come out. You know that's one of those. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, but I don't if that's her picture, dog, I wouldn't be just taken with one, mate. If yeah. it's in the picture, that's good enough for me. Um, Cool, cool. I, I want to quickly, Pete, um, because obviously, as everyone will keep hearing all the time now, um, there's, a, there's a group of us that are ambassadors now for, for Memphis UK, the charity which we did the Twin Peaks Challenge for. There's a really good friend of mine. He's an absolute legend when it comes to doing all manner of crazy stunts and things to raise money. He's an absolute machine. He's called Darren Bradbury. You can find him at D Bradbury Triple Eight. OK, he's cycling from London, yeah, he'll be at the um, Chelsea football ground in April. Um, and he'll be going from Chelsea all the way up to the Newcastle football ground. So it'll be stopping off en route. Obviously, he's stopping in last day. He's going to York. He's going to go to Newcastle. Um, he's going to be doing that. And um, he's looking for people who want to join him on his little jaunt as we say um so you can join him at any time um, regarding that particular stunt um, that he's doing so if you want to join him you can um dm at memphis uk if you want to make a donation you can join you can go to darren's just giving page which is um just giving.com forward slash fundraising Thames to Times. That's T H A M E S T O T Y N E, and you can find that just giving page there. So you can make a donation, or you can join in. We must have lots of cyclists out there that follow oh. the Twin Peaks podcast. So if you want to get in touch with Darren, get in touch with Darren. If you want to DM me, DM me. If you want to DM Memphis, please do so. And you can join in anytime um, along route and just cheer him on, or cycle with him for a couple of miles just to keep him company. Um, so if you want to do that, please just get in touch with me, Memphis or Darren at D Bradbury Triple Eight. Okay, Pete, have you got any more that you want to share? I was going to say, it sounds great. And if you're a cyclist, then, then might as well join in. Um, yeah, Absolutely. well, did, sorry, did you say, do you want to mention another stop, did you say? You mentioned another stop, mate. You go for it. Yeah, um, one that might be worth looking at. It's one I, I wrote this one because I have my list. That's got all the all the stuff on it, and um, I wrote down on there head H E A D, which is headlamp, um, which is one that does um, flooring stuff. You know, um, sort of vinyl flooring. They've got a massive, massive contracts with the NHS and that. Where any new NHS buildings, you know, you know, when you go to those buildings, they've all got those sort of like grey floors, grey vinyl plastic kind of floors. As that, yeah, you know, a lot of that's supplied by Headlamp. Um, recent results were good from from what I wrote that down about two weeks ago. So from, from memory, results were good. But it's a really, really decent company. You know, I'd imagine it's been caught up in the usual market malaise that we've been suffering. And I think, you know, concerns about input prices and all the usual. Um, 
looking looking at sharepad yeah looking at sharepad it's showing forecast pe of 13.6 drop into 11.6 with forecast yield of 3.4 two-year forecast yield of 4.3 um according to sharepad it looks like there's actually net cash so those numbers are attractive attractive numbers Obviously, you need to, you know, be looking. I don't hold it. You don't hold it, Pete, do you? No, I don't, no. No, you need to, to, need to look at the um, numbers and all that kind of thing. The shares have been dropping back, but they look like they might be starting to turn up again. So, yeah, you know, maybe it's an interesting time to be, to be looking at them. You get a nice dividend. It certainly doesn't look expensive. It's got a very good history of doing well um i actually know a guy he came to the wheelie bash um who uh was the finance director there or whatever so um i'm pretty cool. sure he might have been is there another flooring company on the market oh, there's quite a few flooring companies pete I'm try, no i'm pretty sure it was head he's at anyway okay that's neither here nor there really but but the point is um yeah, you know, decent company. Interesting because when you look at the chart, for sort of six months, it was dropping. And then then it sort of, oh, I don't know if you, I don't think I quite let you see that. There we go. It was sort of dropping and, um, and it looks like it's sort of dropped and now it's sort of leveled off and maybe starting to go up. So, yeah, could be a good time to be having a look at it okie dokie um i'm gonna just mention this this other stock p I, I already own bunzel so this is almost like a similar sort of business that i've i've looked at as well and the share the reason why it's on my radar was when i was researching bunzel it came onto my radar but also the share price has been drifting off despite quite positive news and they came out with a trading update um last month so this company is diploma the ticker symbol is dplm and it operates a decentralized collection of distribution businesses which supply specialized industrial healthcare products and services to a wide range of niche markets. So that's why it's caught on my radar. Um, the focus is on supply of low cost but essential products such as seals for um, hydro, I, sorry, hydraulic cylinders and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. The major revenue generated are consumer pro products as well. Um, so it's all about essential problems, essential product solutions, and so on and so forth. And they've built up a long-term relationship with lots of different customers all around the world. Um, and it's one of those um, sort of companies which focuses on growing through or has in the past focused through buying bolt-ons and small companies in, in, in growing niches. But it came out with a positive trading update last month. Um, Share prices continue to drift. Um, the performance was quite strong. Underlying revenue growth of 16% driven by organic revenue initiatives and continued strong strength. Rate of growth was ahead of the 12% generated in the previous financial year, year to, year to date, yeah, year on year. And reported revenue growth was 28%. However, the share price drifts. So you've got a share price peak, 52-week uh, peak of £35 per share, 35 yeah. four. 52 week low of 22.86 and it's currently sitting at 27.36 it's drifting from a high of um as i just said recent high of 35 back in november it's now sitting at 27.36 so on my radar i don't own it i'm just suggesting it as some a stock to go away and do a bit of research on the past year to date it's down 18 percent we're only in fact we're only in february folks down nearly 19 percent um over the past 12 months it's up 15 just shy of 15 percent and obviously it's a bit of a, a, a tiny little diddly um sorry tiny percentage of, of a dividend yield as well pete but i'll let you do the share scope um bits well, on that if you want yeah i mean that's that's where that's where i'd i'd have to be cautious i mean i think I think you're right. I think Diploma DPLM is a very good company, and it's 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 
grown by doing a lot of acquisitions, a lot of small acquisitions. It's done them well. It's integrated them well. Those kind of business models, I mean, often these very, very acquisitive companies can be a bit of a problem, you know, but but there are certain companies. Um, what's the other one? Keyword system, K, KWS springs to mind. There are certain companies that are very good at doing these small acquisitions and they've proven themselves over some time. And Diploma is definitely in that category. Um, it's obviously very cyclical. You know, it's the kind of thing that when, when the poo hits the what's it, you know, it's, it's going to tank. Um, but at this stage, it is. But the, the other interesting thing about it, Pete, is that it hasn't got a lot of debt. It's only got about one, 181 million pounds worth of debt. Right. Yeah, that's good. It's sitting. Yeah. It's it's paying a prog this word that people should keep an eye out for when a company says this as well. It's paying a pro progressive dividend, Pete. Yeah, and that so helps by the shares. Yeah, it, I mean, no, it I'm helps because it's, you if you hold it for a long term, which is what it's done really well long term. This company, it, it's, you're compounding the dividend all the time. You know what I mean? And that's the beauty of, of having a company. That's and the dividend is growing. Dividend. So. So that's, yeah, 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 the growing dividend makes it attractive. Um, looking at on Sharepad, it's got forecast PE of 29.8 and two year 27.6. You know, th those are not those are not generous numbers. I mean, I think that could easily be 23. So you could fall it, see it fall a bit more. Um, what well, you know, forecast yield 1.6 percent, two year forecast yield 1.8. Obviously, if it beats if it beats earnings expectations, beats forecasts, then those PEs are wrong, and it's actually cheaper. So you know, you always got to bear that in mind. It's good business. Yeah, good point. The, the thing, and I'm going to talk about total returns now, Pete. This is what I, this is what interests me about holding a stock long term, and I'm hoping that more and more people, when they find a good stock, will be able to hold it beyond the average of what is now. 18 months you know everyone's a momentum trader so if you can get beyond three four five years and hold it for 10 years 18 right? minutes <laughs> yeah for, for some people mm -hmm. um eight o'clock eight o'clock until uh, eight 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 eighteen a.m and, the, and they're in and out right so 10 year total returns annualized for diploma pete okay 22.15 five year 22.65 Three year, 29.3. And then we get a little bit of a flip. It's 17.64 in the past year, total returns, including dividends. Yeah. But it's been rolling over for the past three months. Year to date, it's just getting beaten up. Yeah. So I'm looking, I'm thinking, hmm, crikey. Okay. It's gone from 35. Hmm. It's, it's going down to 26. So I'm watching it and watching it. Do I need another company that's similar to Bunzel? Probably not. You know, but maybe. I've got gotten out of buns of what I was going to get out of buns of, and maybe I'll swap swap one for the other. I don't know yet, but it's a global yeah. entity, prog uh, progressive uh, dividend. It's long term growth. They've always executed with with what they've purchased and bolted on. Can they continue that sort of company? Uh, sorry, that sort of growth. I don't know. But the beauty about the stocks that I like to buy is, it's not companies that everyone else is shouting the rooftops about. When I'm looking for long, long-term investments, I'm looking for stocks that are going to do the business nice and quiet. The traders and the and the short-term investors aren't going to get involved in it. You know, the stocks that have done extremely well for me long-term have been the ones that no one else is interested in, that no one's talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know, it's the reason why I very rarely talk about the stocks I own anymore because I prefer to them to just be like, what do they call those things, Pete? That grow in the dark. What are they call mushrooms. Truffles, truffles, uh, truffles, truffles, mushrooms, chocolate truffles, chocolate that, truffles. And, that, and, that, that and mushrooms as well. But yeah, yeah I prefer the, them to grow in the dark, mate. You know what I mean? That's what I prefer. I mean, those, those, okay. numbers, those, those historic returns you read out in Diploma are stunning. You know, that's that's, that, 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 that's, no, that's no that's no precedent for what they might do going forward, mate. There might be minus twenty nine percent over the next ten years. Yeah, you guarantee <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, I know. But no guarantee. Um, no, the, the thing is, what's driven that is the acquisitions, those bolt on acquisitions. And when they've got such a small amount of debt, that shows they've got space to do more acquisitions. And it's those acquisitions that will drive the 
increase in earnings. So that forecast PE of 27, 29, you know, could be way too high because in reality, it will probably do a load of acquisitions, beat expectations because it's added more earnings from buying them in and just keep motoring on. So, yeah, there's a lot to like. Who, who knows, mate? This is the beauty of just looking off the radar. You know, a lot of people get stimulated by lots of people conversing about stocks on Twitter and they go, oh, 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 X, Y, Z, and talking about it. But sometimes go away and just find stocks that's off the radar. You know, let someone discover your stock that you already bought. You know, don't go buying something that someone else has bought because you don't know what's going to happen to it down the pipe. Right. We've once again go, gone over the hour, Pete. So, no. <laughs> failed, failed I can't, miserably. I can't believe failed that. Miserably. Oh. oh, my gosh. Right. I want to thank everybody again for uh, listening to us and rambling on with this general conversation. Thank you all for your great feedback regarding number 67 that we had that went live on video on YouTube. Thanks for the numbers. If you're checking it out on YouTube, if you liked podcast number 67, please subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to 68 now, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and other channels that you utilize to listen to this podcast. We really, really appreciate your support. Um, with all the stuff that Pete and I are doing. Please support Pete's charity, the Backup Charity, and make a donation on the Just Giving page. And if you see us on Twitter and you want to make a comment and you want to give us some feedback regarding this, good, bad, or indifferent, please do so. If you like something on this podcast, share it with somebody else. Share it, retweet it, comment about it, tell us, you know, and we'll keep on trying to improve this um, podcast for you. Um, if you've seen two podcasts and you're absolutely fed up and you're like, Please, guys, do not do another video. We'll think about that as well. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. until, yeah. you know, two yeah. weeks' time, thank you all so much for your support. Please stay safe. Please do what you can if you can in your community to support anybody else. Take care. God bless you all. Lots of love from the Twin Peaks. Thank you. See you next time. This Twin Peaks Investing Podcast is brought to you in association with SharePad from ShareScope, the UK's number one investment data and analysis software for private investors and traders. Visit sharescope.co.uk and discover the advantage. Mm -hmm.